What up y'all, how's it going? Ben Dean here and today I'm going to be eating some Korean street food. I got all the classics here, uh, all the most common types of Korean street food. Obviously, I'm not in the streets right now. I did find a place that delivers um, this kind of street food. Um, so I got, like I said, a set of all the most classics. It came out to only about 11 bucks. Um, and when I picked up that bag from the delivery guy, I was like, man, this is heavy. This is a lot of food. I probably, yeah, I probably won't eat all of this. I think uh, on the app it said it's for three people. Um, and usually you don't really eat this as a meal. I mean, you can eat it as a meal, but a lot of times in the street, you're just eating it as a little snack. But anyway, let me show you what I got here. I'm going to start off with this. This is probably the most unusual thing. Um, they delivered it all in these kind of like plastic containers with a cellophane type of, of plastic covering the top. And they always give you a little cutter to cut that open. So this is Sunde. Um, this is could be the most strange food, maybe the most off-putting food to um, a lot of people who are might be from, you know, Western countries, perhaps. Um, this is blood sausage, and here is here it is over here. Um, inside, I believe, is like maybe pig's blood. I could be wrong on that, but I know there's like glass noodles in there, um, and it's wrapped in some kind of some kind of intestines. I'm I'm thinking so this can get pretty intense. And over here on the on the other side, uh, when you get sunde, a lot of times, especially at a uh, street food cart they'll give you some kind of like i believe there's liver and lung in here which also can be a little bit off-putting um i'm not a huge fan of the liver and lung i mean it's, if it's around I'll, I'll you know i'll nibble on it but i do really like sunde uh, i just don't eat it very often over here we have some fish cakes i think you might want to you might call this odeng you might call this um maybe omuk but it is a fish cake, and it's kind of, let me show you here. This is another popular uh, thing that you can get in on the street in Korea. Although it does look a little bit different than this. If you can see, there's just kind of like, they almost look like little dumplings or something. Um, floating in this little soup. And a lot of times, if you get them on the street, they'll look more like this. I'll try to find an image and put it up there on the screen. It's kind of skewered on a long skewer. Um, and that's kind of how you see it a lot on the street. Um, but I think uh, this isn't it too uncommon either. And I heard if you dip this in soy sauce, it's really good. Next over here, I've had this a couple times on the channel. Uh, a lot of you guys, if you are familiar with you know Korean food or Korean street food at all, You'll probably know of this one. So this is probably the most common uh, Korean street food. It is tteokbokki. So it is kind of like chewy, kind of really spicy rice cakes. And they're shaped like little little cylinders in here. And this one's looking good. I got the, the spicy version. So this should be good. Looks like there's also a little egg in there. No, since we're doing Korean street food, I'm going to keep it Korean use some toilet paper as a napkin last but not least I got a bunch of various fried things I'm not really sure what is in here um, but if you go to a Korean street food place a lot of times they'll just have a bunch of like fried foods so to be honest I'm not sure exactly what is in here I see some some dumplings I see something that looks kind of like a hey you know I don't even know maybe some like fried some fried stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll probably know better when I eat it, but it's just an assortment of di various different fried stuff. A lot of times you can see the fried dumplings and just fried, even like fried pumpkin, uh, fried various like vegetables and stuff like that. They also gave me some salt for the sundae. Salt for sundae. And usually when you eat sundae, you do kind of dip it in the salt to give it that extra extra flavor and this salt is quite orange orange I don't know if you can really see that uh, and they also gave me some soy sauce which you know I never really tried dipping this these fish cakes in soy sauce before but I was just looking up uh, doing a little research on Korean street food because I'm not an expert honestly and someone said that you can 
dip the fish cakes in soy sauce for a good boost of flavor. If this falls off, man, I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful because this is just this is a lot of food, especially for for like 11 bucks, right? So I got my little skewer in here. I'm gonna tr go ahead and try this first, just because it's in here, and why not? One more close up. And let's try it without any sauce first. For someone like me, I'm going to be sure it up just and give you like my my personal takes on it. Um, not the most flavorful thing. Not very fishy, but you can definitely taste a little bit of that. Um, of that of that fishiness, but it's not overpowering, you know, at all. It's kind of a very mild. It's like, oh yeah, I don't know if you have ever had uh, fish cakes before, but I'm gonna try dipping it in the soy sauce. I think this actually would kick it up a, a notch because it is kind of bland. I, I gotta say. Hmm. That does actually make it a lot better. The texture, um, I think there's a lot of people in America or Western countries that would not like the texture of this, maybe. It's kind of like, uh, hmm, kind of hard to describe. It has, it's kind of, it has a bite to it. Um, some might call it slightly on the rubbery side, but it's not really rubbery because it's not... I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe, man. Um, I think you would have to try it out for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and try out the Sunday because I do like Sunday. I think this is a great, uh, like a side dish for, for alcohol. They call it Anju here in Korea. And this one's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just dip it in the salt here. Mmm. I think... Even if you're put off by like blood sausage and and stuff like that, you should probably give this a chance. I think this is one of the weirder look seeming foods that doesn't actually taste that weird. Um, in, at least in my opinion, uh, I have seen videos actually where people like uh, non Koreans have tried this and they didn't like it. But you definitely have to dip it in the salt again. The texture can could be a little bit off-putting to some people. It's not like a regular; they call it a blood sausage, but it's if you can't you can't you don't want to expect to be eating like a sausage texture um, when you're eating sundae. Um, it's definitely not like that. With all the glass noodles inside, it's definitely it's got a kind of a almost slightly chewy. I'm gonna guess this is liver, and I'm gonna go ahead and try this out as well. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit scared, so I'll try it with a little bit of salt. Mmm, it's not bad. There's a little bit of a bloody taste in it. Kind of like that irony, irony feel to it, you know what I'm saying? Mmm. The more you eat it, the more the stronger it gets. What what kind of textures is this? So far, everything has some crazy different textures. Um, honestly, I'm not really sure what texture that is. Uh, it's definitely not melting your mouth. It's not chewy though. It's a little bit. Well, if you ever had liver before, I'm pretty sure this is liver. Uh, so you probably know, you probably know that that feel. And I believe I could be completely off. I could be very off, but I believe this is lung. But don't take my word for it. I could just be very wrong here. But I think I did look it up, and it said usually Sunday comes with like liver and lung. So 
I'm going to go ahead and try this. I'm going to go ahead and get these kind of crazy ones out of the way first. Uh, if you're if you're kind of not a very adventurous eater, I wouldn't recommend you to try this one, honestly. Very chewy. Taste kind of similar. But very chewy. Everything else, if I've, you know, if I said this was kind of chewy or this was kind of chewy, no, not at all. Whatever this is right here, I might be chewing this for a hot minute. Um, let me go ahead and try to eat something that's not so chewy in the meantime. Usually fried stuff isn't really, really chewy, so... So chewing. I need like a a drink. I'll be back. Still chewing. All right, it's down. Not my favorite, to be honest. I don't like things that are usually that chewy. I don't think there's anything that, I, besides gum, you know, I don't really like things that I have to chew more than, I like to eat things fast. That's just my personal thing. And if it takes more than like a few bites to, to get it dissolved in there and get it down, then not usually my favorite. Um, but if you do like really chewy stuff, then you might want to give that a try. This is looks like glass noodles inside of maybe some wrapped seaweed that's dipped in batter and fried. I think that's what it is, and I'm gonna try it out. Mm. Once everything is battered and fried, it does kind of uh, take on that kind of fried, the similar fried taste. I believe this is, this also looks like a fried fish cake. I believe that's what it is, or maybe it's even, that might be squid or octopus or something. Something dealing with the sea, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> this is the most like freestyle, like, I, I guess I'm not really informing you guys much here. Uh, I'm not, I don't even know what this is, but something fried, hopefully I can find out. I believe this is the fried pumpkin or sweet potato or something like that. Really just a lot of that fried batter taste. And they're all going to have kind of that same kind of fried batter taste. A lot of times you'll dip these in, or at least I've seen people do it. Dip the fried stuff in the tteokbokki sauce. But I think a lot of some people also just eat it stirred up. Mm. Man, this might be a really long video because I haven't even tried everything yet, and I'm already like, I don't know, ten minutes in. All right, let me go ahead and try this, and then I'll try to speed up the eating. <clears throat> this is tteokbokki. You've seen it. If you haven't seen it, then I've done a few videos on it. So it's a spicy rice cake. I don't want to say chewy because, and this this thing over here is chewy, um, but it's got a little bit of a. It's kind of chewy. It's kind of um, I don't want to say gummy either. I guess I need to figure out some more uh, words to describe food. Um, I've done multiple videos on this, so you can see if you want more depth, in depth kind of description. A little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, a thick kind of sauce. There is also a little egg in here. And more fish cakes. This one's pretty good. So, 
I think I described pretty much everything here. I'm not an expert on it either, so <clears throat> you might not want to believe everything I say 100%, but based on my experience, I think uh, I think what I said was pretty accurate. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and start eating and take out as much as possible, although I definitely believe I'm going to be saving some for later because it's a lot of food. My favorites would, well, it depends on the mood. Honestly, I don't really eat Korean street food, as you can probably tell by my lack of knowledge, but. I don't really eat Korean street food that much. And to be honest, I kind of had the misconception about street food in Korea before I came here. Before I came here, I thought Korean street food, well, I thought street food in Asia, in general, was just everywhere. For some reason, I had that thought in my mind. Maybe uh, watching too much TV or something, but I thought pretty much like all Asian countries have like very different and unique and very plentiful street food. And while Korea does have a lot more street food compared to where I'm from in America, it wasn't one of those things that was like every block, not even close. I'm sure some neighborhoods have more street food than other neighborhoods. Um, and definitely... There are some places in in like Seoul at least um, that have like a lot of street food. It's some markets, some of the popular shopping areas will have a ton of street food and a ton of uh, more diverse street food as well. But usually, if we're not talking about just a ra like a specific spot. Uh, if you're just talking about an ordinary street, yeah, like I said, usually not a ton, and the variance isn't that huge either. Like I said, these are the most popular street foods that um, that if you go here, if you go to like you know busy areas or you know, more low-key areas, areas with like just apartments, areas with more stores. You'll always see these, these foods. Whereas maybe a, a more Another kind of street food is um, maybe like a chicken skewer. They'll take some piece of chicken, put it on a skewer, grill it up, and you can have a bunch of different sauces you can eat with it. But those are just more not in every single in every single neighborhood, you know. I don't know if there's any around where I live in the general vicinity at all, but you can get this anywhere um, and definitely worth a try if you're ever visiting. For me, 
if I'm gonna be chilling, maybe having a drink. Um, I really like sundae. I think it makes it like a really good Anju alcohol side dish. I you you know me, I'm American. I love fried foods. Uh, so basically, any fried food, any time day of the week is good. And there's some days when I really do actually kind of almost crave tteokbokki as well. Not often, but there's some days. This, on the other hand. I never really crave fish cakes. <laughs> There's not really a time when I'm, when I'm like, oh man, that, that would be good. Maybe when it's really cold out in the winter, but even still, I would prefer tteokbokki. <clears throat> Damn. times like these when you definitely need at least an ally or two to, to help you out eating this because yeah I'm not gonna eat all this I'll, I'll tell you right now I only have like a couple minutes left on my camera right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and restart it and see what we can do for the rest of this I'm not gonna force anything here Hmm. Maybe I'll try a little weird combination. I'm gonna try some of the sundae in the the poke sauce. <laughs> this could be real weird. I've never really seen anyone do this. Better with the salt, for sure. Mm. I mean, I feel like I'm eating at a pretty good pace, too. My pace has been pretty good. I'm still, like, not even halfway through. I'm like, no joke. Like, if you're here as a tourist, you might, you might end up hitting up some of the spots where... You know some of the main shopping spots where they do have a lot more street food than usual and you might think oh yeah you know Korea has all the best street food but really after living here for man I've been here for I've been in Seoul for like four years now over four years I've lived in three or four different neighborhoods and yeah it's uh it's not anything too crazy so if you come to Korea and then you see stuff like this and don't be disappointed that or don't expect you know a crazy amount of different varieties and stuff
<clears throat> also, if you are curious about, you know, different kinds of street foods or different things about Korea in general, this is going to sound like a straight up plug, but it's not. Actually, when I was looking up earlier about a little bit of info about street food, I googled it and I went to a soulistic.com. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a website about Korea. And it definitely it introduces a lot of different things about food, culture, different words, phrases, uh, but mostly just pretty much everything about Korea, all of the ba basic stuff that you might want to know if you ever travel here or if you want to live here. And it's definitely a good resource, I feel like, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. If you're an OG on YouTube, you might know Gilpo Keith. Soulistic, the website, they also ha used to have a YouTube channel. The guy who ran it, Keith. He also had his own YouTube channel. I think he stopped doing YouTube. Or, yeah, he stopped doing YouTube, but... If I'm going to tell you a little funny, funny story, I've actually met him randomly twice in the streets. I'm going to expose him a little bit. I don't know if any of you guys know him, but... I mean, his YouTube channel used to have at least over 100 thou, maybe 200 thou, or maybe 100. Way back in the day. Way before I ever started. I used to watch his videos, and I came, when I first came to Seoul, I was out um, in Itaewon, just drinking. And I saw him on the street, and I was like, Keith! Ran down there, and I was fanboying pretty hard because I watched all his YouTube videos and he seemed like a really cool funny guy and he, he was like, he was he was really cool funny um I was probably already like pretty intoxicated at that point this was like four years ago um and then I met him again in in Itaewon about like a year or two later randomly I guess like about a year later. And um I remember we played like beer pong together. I was asking him like about the YouTube about the website and everything. And uh, he was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm going pretty well. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna do the YouTube channel anymore. I'm kinda looking for someone new to kinda take over as the face of the channel. And he was like, I mean we were both drinking, playing beer pong and stuff. He was like, hey man, you know, you could be a decent little candidate. I don't even I don't know him now. I met him randomly twice, but and I was like, ah, oh, no way. This is before I started YouTube. I was like, man, no way. I, I could never do that. I, I'm not the type of person that could do YouTube. And it just kept it at that. So funny. And now, <laughs> I haven't seen him since, but... I wonder if he remembers that. Ah, anyway, guys, you know what? I'm full. Hey, I think I've eaten a lot. Um, introduced all the the classics, and so I think uh, I think I might just have to call it a day. Final thoughts, you know. I think most people would be fine with all the fried foods, um, 
they would be okay with tteokbokki, but I've actually heard a lot of, uh, you know, Americans or non-Koreans who say this is really spicy. I've never, the ones on the street that aren't purposely made to be super spicy, just the average, average ones usually aren't too bad in my opinion, but I have heard that some people think this is really spicy. Um, this, you can't really, it's just really kind of, eh, it's whatever. Kind of not much flavor in there. So it's not something that you would really hate, I don't think, but you might not really just enjoy it that much. Uh, this is where I would tell you guys to be very cautious. The insides, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't really like that, even if it was prepared in a different way, anyway. But if you do like this stuff, uh, definitely give this a try. The Sunday, I think, if you're an adventurous eater, you'll like it. Uh, if you're not, then maybe not. But uh, definitely a safer bet than these insides although this is kind of like insides as well but a little bit different anyway um before i end this video i want to give a few last shout outs to some people who subscribed or supported me on patreon delaney michael and tony um or tonya uh thank you for supporting me on patreon guys thank you all for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next one peace